Hello and welcome to the session in which we would look at a consolidation financial statement problem that could appear on the CPA exam or you could see it in your advanced accounting course. Simply put, we need to find out what is the profit for the consolidated financial statement for Adam Corp. Now, as I mentioned, this topic is covered on the CPA exam as well as advanced accounting. If you are a CPA candidate, I strongly suggest you visit my website, farhatlectures.com. I don't replace your CPA review course. Most likely you are taking a course if you are studying for the exam. However, I can be a useful addition to your CPA review course. You cannot walk into the exam without knowing consolidation in depth. I can add 10 to 15 points by helping you understand consolidation from A to Z. Matter of fact, I think I overdo it in consolidation. I have so many lectures that I overwhelm you with consolidation, but the point is I can give you an alternative supplemental explanation that's going to go with your CPA review course that's going to help you understand the topic. If that's what you want to do, please visit my website and subscribe. Your risk is one month of subscription. Your potential gain is passing the CPA exam. And if not for anything, take a look at my website to find out how well or not well your university doing on the CPA exam. Please take a look at my other courses, which is advanced accounting. I do have a complete advanced accounting course. If you have not connected with me on LinkedIn, please do so. And take a look at my LinkedIn recommendation from people who actually passed the exam using my system. Like this recording, share it, connect with me on Instagram and Facebook. So let's take a look at this exercise that looks a little bit intimidating at face value. But once we look at it, once you understand the material, you will see it's not bad. Adam Corp owns 90% of Farhat Common Stock and 80% that of Maggie's Common Stock. The remaining shares of Farhat and Maggie are owned by various other investors. So the main owner is Adam. Farhat sells exclusively to Maggie. Maggie buy exclusively from Farhat and Maggie sells exclusively to unrelated companies. And this is the data that we are giving. This is Farhat sales, 130,000 cost of sales. They have no beginning inventory. They have no ending inventory. Whatever they produce, they sold all of it. Maggie sold 90,000. Cost of sales is 65,000. No beginning inventory. And they end up with 65,000 of ending inventory. So now let's take a look at what, what's happening here. So Farhat sells to Maggie and Maggie sells to an unrelated party. Okay. And the question is, what is the profit for the consolidated financial statement as far as Adam is concerned? So this is what we are looking at. So again, Maggie sells to unrelated, which is outside party. Well, what we have to do now, we have to compute the consolidated figures and find out how much should Adam Corp include in their financial statement. Well, hopefully we know that any interrelated sales, any interrelated costs will, ha will have to be eliminated. Well, let's start by starting with this computation. We have Farhat sales plus Maggie sales equal to 220,000. We know that Farhat sells exclusively to Maggie. Therefore, we have to take out Farhat sales when we consolidate because Farhat sales are interrelated sales. Therefore, what's left is 90,000. So under the consolidated financial statement for Adam Corp, only 90,000. Simply put, the 30,000 will not appear. Let's take a look at the cost of goods, cost of sales. 100,000 plus 65, 165. Again, we have to eliminate any interrelated cost of sales. What's interrelated cost of sales? Well, we have to subtract 100,000. Here's what happened. We are, Maggie is claiming 65,000 as her cost of sales. But that's not really true. That's not really true. Why not? Because the true cost of sales is the cost of sales for Farhat. Because Farhat sold it to Maggie, which is a related party, then Maggie sold it to an outside party. What is the original cost of sales for Farhat? The original cost of sales is 100,000, not not 65. So when we take 165 minus 50, that's going to keep us with 65. Then we're going to have to go back and reduce the 65 to the original cost of sales of Farhat. The original cost of sales, because look, Farhat sold 130,000 to Maggie. Well, 65 of that was sold and 65 remain in ending inventory. So 
really that 65 65 what Maggie considered cost of sales it's really 50 because we have to go with Farhat's cost of sales the original cost of sales so the 65 cost of goods sold and this is the ending inventory it's really 50 therefore we have to reduce an additional 15,000 therefore cost of sales the consolidated cost of sales is only 50,000 now we can compute the profit the profit is 90 is 90 minus 50 the profit is 90 minus 50 the profit is forty thousand dollars so this is how much profit we have let's go a step further what if i ask you what is the ending inventory on the consolidated financial statement well well the, what's the ending inventory the ending inventory is you would think well maggie has sixty-five thousand. that's the only ending inventory true remember one hundred and thirty thousand is what Ma what maggie purchased from farhat 65 of it is gone because she sold it and remember the true cost of that 65 is only 50 which we account for that and what's left is 65 of ending inventory that ending inventory is not truly 65 we have to reduce it by 15,000 so I could have asked you what is the ending inventory for the consolidated financial statement the ending inventory is 15. Well, let's the best way to do this is let's take a look at the journal entry that we'll have to complete because they could ask they could also ask you about the journal entry or they could simply ask you in a form of a simulation to input the journal entries for this transaction first i have to debit sales for far hat 130,000. remember that 130,000 sales it has to be gone i have to debit sales i have to credit cost of sales cost of goods sold for far hat 130,000 that I have to do as well I also have to eliminate reduce the inventory for Maggie this is for far hat I have to reduce the inventory for Maggie for Maggie's company I have to reduce her inventory by 15,000 and I have to reduce the cost of goods sold for Maggie another 15,000 which is this 15,000 here another 15,000 and this will be the journal entry let's make sure debits 130 equal to credits 130. so they can ask you many questions about this problem they could ask you what is the ending inventory the ending inventory consolidated is 50. here they ask you what is the profit they could have also asked you to what will be a correct journal entry and they will give you several journal entries and one of them will be either debit sales far hat credit cost of sales far hat credit inventory maggie credit cost of sales maggie fifteen thousand. so they could ask you several questions about this anyhow any way any way they ask the questions as long as you understand the concept as long as you understand what you are being told as long as you understand how to answer it you should be good to go at the end of this recording i'm going to remind you again about farhatlectures.com this is what i do i explain the material and details to help you understand the concept i explain the concept i explain questions i'll give you multiple choice true false exercises that deals with advanced accounting don't hesitate give me give me a chance again your risk is one month of subscription and in the grand in the grand scheme of things you are investing one month of subscription for four years that's what you are doing if it works you keep it you get charged again every month until you pass if you think it was a bad idea you lost thirty dollars you lost thirty dollars to take your chance to find out whether i am a good investment for you i think i am based on other performance based on prior performance anyhow stay safe good luck and study hard